Welcome to the Get Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield, and I'm the Get Fit Guy. Now, if you've ever done an online search for a local gym, driven through your neighborhood in search of an exercise facility, or visited a variety of health clubs to find the exercise setting that's just perfect for you, then you're probably aware that the right gym can make an enormous difference between enjoying your workouts and staying motivated or dreading going to a place that makes you feel uncomfortable or self-conscious. So if you're looking for the perfect gym or you're confused about the difference between a health club, gym, studio, community center, YMCA, CrossFit, box, or any other variation of an exercise facility, then this episode is for you. In it, you're going to discover the difference between the various types of gyms and get four tips to find the perfect gym for you. Let's start with fitness facility number one, a personal training studio. Now, a personal training studio is typically a small gym that's staffed by a few certified personal trainers who work with you one-on-one or work with you in a small group of people who have similar goals or fitness levels as you. Typically, when you join a personal training studio, each of your visits is supervised by a personal trainer, and you often can't simply show up and work out on your own. At the same time, however, because each workout is supervised, you're guaranteed to get fast results, experience very little guesswork during your workouts, and have the peace of mind that your training program is being overseen by an experienced exercise professional. As you can probably imagine, a private personal training studio experience can be expensive, but if you're just getting started or you have lofty fitness goals, then this can be one of the best ways to get what you need, even though you do pay for it. Now, fitness facility number two is a circuit gym. Circuit gyms are typically set up as a series of weight machines, workout gear, and cardiovascular equipment that are put together to work each of your body parts in a specific period of time. When you're exercising at a circuit gym, you typically show up, you do the circuit, which is often set for 30, 45, or 60 minutes, and then you leave. Some circuit gyms have set times during which you show up and complete the circuit as an individual or with a group, and other circuit gyms let you show up and do the circuit whenever you'd like. Examples of circuit gyms include Burn 60 and Barry's Boot Camp. And many times you'll find circuit gyms are franchised enterprises like this. Although many circuit gyms aren't really gyms at all, but simply boot camp style classes that take place in parks or other public meeting settings. Fitness facility number three would be a women's only gym. Curves is probably the most popular example of a women's only gym. Incidentally, it also falls into the category of a circuit gym. In 30 minutes, you work each of your major muscle groups as you go through a program of strength training, cardio, and stretching with a group of other women. Now, if you're a woman and a co-ed weight room is intimidating or annoying, a gym like Curves may be a perfect fit for you. Total Women's Spa and Ladies of America are other examples of women's only gyms, and I'll put links to all of these in the show notes over at quickanddirtytips.com. Sorry, guys, but I'm not aware of many men's-only gyms out there. Your strategy is simply to scare all the ladies away into the women's-only gym. (laughs) Just kidding. Fitness facility number four would be a CrossFit box. Now, CrossFit is a popular style of cardio that combines elements like strength training, high-intensity cardio intervals, and gymnastics in a workout of the day, or what they call a WOD. Most CrossFit gyms resemble a cross between a gymnastics studio, a garage gym, and a sport training facility. CrossFit is the principal strength and conditioning program for many police academies and tactical operations teams, military special operations units, and martial artists. So if you have a personal interest or participation in these type of athletic activities, then CrossFit may be especially appealing to you. Although it can be kind of intimidating if you're just arriving on the fitness scene. Fitness facility number five is a garage or a warehouse gym. A garage or warehouse gym is typically an inexpensive, no-frills place that often has no water fountains, no towels, no locks for lockers, and offers very basic, inexpensive exercise equipment such as barbells, dumbbells, or a well-used exercise machine or treadmill. They often have limited hours and a very specific type of old-school bodybuilding or weightlifting-focused clientele. It's a very 
pain and gain atmosphere if you happen to have seen that movie lately. However, these no-frills gyms are also the most economical option. If you're just looking for something extremely basic and inexpensive, a place to go pump iron, so to speak, you may find this setting works well for you. Just be sure to shower well afterwards. Fitness facility number six is a health club. From LA Fitness to 24-hour fitness to the YMCA, health clubs offer you everything from childcare to swimming programs to group fitness classes to frequently updated and new workout equipment. Many of the fancier clubs even have amenities like spas, saunas, eucalyptus-scented towels, free Wi-Fi, tennis courts, valet parking, and even dry cleaning, but you'll often have to pay a premium membership price for these offerings. My personal gym of choice is the YMCA. Since it has a personal family touch, it's a little less expensive than some of the fancier health clubs, but it also offers many similar amenities. Some purist, old-school gym rats scoff at the idea of a clean, pristine gym setting and may not be motivated by this atmosphere, but I've personally found that a family health club seems to be the best choice for most people who want variety. Now that you're familiar with the gym settings you may find in your neighborhood or your city, I've also got four quick and dirty tips to choose an exercise setting that's just perfect for you. Tip number one is geographical location. Now, one of my primary reasons for joining the YMCA that I mentioned was the fact that I can ride my bike there in just 10 minutes. Convenience is key, and if you can find a motivating gym setting that's near your home or near your office, you'll be far more likely to stick to your workout routine. Even though you may be able to find a slightly nicer gym somewhere else, it doesn't matter if you join that gym but never again show up because it's so inconvenient to get to. Tip number two is demographics. When you do a trial membership at a gym or you spend the first few weeks exercising in a new facility, you'll quickly discover whether or not the other members are people you'll get along with. For example, my local YMCA is full of moms, dads, high schoolers, and other family types. My wife and I are pretty comfortable around this crowd. In contrast, my previous gym was mostly 40-year-old male bodybuilders and weightlifters. Now, I wasn't that uncomfortable lifting weights around these guys, but my wife didn't enjoy that atmosphere quite as much, and it certainly wasn't kid-friendly. So make sure you're comfortable with the people you'll be exercising around. Tip number three is equipment. If you're familiar with and trained in the proper use of free weights, then a gym that primarily has things like barbells and dumbbells may be just fine for you. But if you're just starting out and you don't have access to exercise machines, which will help guide you through beginner movements, then you may fight an uphill battle when it comes to getting fit. When you visit a gym, take a look around to make sure it has the equipment that you know how to use, which is appropriate for your goals. And finally, tip number four is the staff. From the front desk staff to the personal trainers, you'll want to make sure that you get along well with the employees and personnel at your gym. After all, you'll be seeing them several times each week, I hope, and you may find it demotivating if you simply don't like the staff. Just like the demographic of the gym attendees, you'll want to ensure that you feel comfortable around the staff and that they seem like they're welcoming you. So, if you've identified the type of gym that's going to be best for you and used my four quick and dirty tips to find the gym that fits your needs, you'll be far happier during your workouts, more motivated to train, and less likely to feel like the odd man or odd woman out in your gym setting. Once you find the perfect gym for you, you should also be sure to review two articles I'm going to link to in the show notes. One is called 10 Rules for Proper Gym Etiquette, and one is called tips for finding a personal trainer. And of course, if you have more questions about how to find the perfect gym, then join the conversation over at facebook.com slash get fit guy. And until next time, this is Ben Greenfield, the get fit guy asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Get fit.